with an update on a WWE star status and more. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Recalling the injuries she sustained during her career in WWE, Melina told Wrestling Shoot interviews about her torn ACL, saying, It was off of something really small. It was during one of the live events for Raw, and I was doing my comeback in a tag match, and it was just one little pivot, so I hit a clothesline, and I think maybe I hit two, maybe just one. But it's that one pivot, and I think my toe stuck, and it snapped during a turn, just a pivot. It's like you feel all of the little strings in your tendons, just as soon as I felt that, I just knew. Oh and all of a sudden I couldn't take a step and just crumbled. My broken ankle shattered in three pieces, so I think that hurt more than the ACL. I think it tore my MCL when I was in the UK and there was a fight back. Some guy was getting his luggage on the airplane and he dropped his bag on my knee and I was like, why would you do that? Explaining why those at the Turning Point event did not see a fan favorite ringside news wrote that Alex Shelley, the talented wrestler known for his high-flying moves and technical prowess, was noticeably absent from Impact Wrestling's Turning Point event on October 27th. According to reports from Mike Johnson at PW Insider, Shelley was sidelined due to an extremely pulled muscle in his calf. Despite being present at the taping, Shelley was unable to compete as scheduled. He was originally set to team up with Chris Sabin to take on the formidable duo of Brian Myers and Moose. Interestingly, Shelley had participated in Impact Wrestling tapings the day before, teaming with Saban to face Josh Alexander and Eric Young. However, the calf injury appears to have taken its toll, leading to his absence at Turning Point. As of now, it remains uncertain when Alex Shelley will make his return to the ring. Revealing why she wanted her head to be buzzed as a part of a WWE storyline, Shotzi Blackheart told 10 Count, I went to Triple H and I was like, hey, my sister is going through chemo and I want to support her. I want to be there for her. I want to shave my head off too. Can we please make it a part of a storyline so I don't just show up one day with no hair? To share a meaningful moment with her was really awesome. That really resonated with my sister. She got a lot of support from my fans, which I really love and appreciate too. Touching on his mindset following his departure from WWE, John Moxley said this to The Messenger. The timing of it was crazy. I was gone one way or another. I was going to give it all up. I didn't give a damn if I was never on TV again. I'd go wrestle in a mask in Mexico in a parking lot if it means having fun again. I hate speaking in the third person because it feels so pretentious, but speaking from a character standpoint, it just makes it easier. But it was like as John Moxley was getting his release date from jail and walking into the world again. It just happened to be when AEW was starting. If there was no AEW, I think I'd be doing the exact same thing, just in a bunch of other places. You'd probably see me in Japan or Revolver, places like that. It probably wouldn't be that much different. Giving a WWE status update on Tamina, who has not been seen in the ring since December, Fightful Select noted that she is still under contract, even though she has not been used in quite a long time. I've heard she had been backstage here and there. She was backstage when CM Punk showed up there, and that was April 24th, but she has not wrestled since. I think it was February 27th, and she was just used on a couple of episodes of Main Event. She was used in the Royal Rumble, and she hadn't been around for months before. For that, Tamina has not been wrestling regularly since the beginning of December of last year, so we're going on almost a full year. She's had the Rumble and two main event matches that she lost since then.
revealing how Vince McMahon may have played a role in the UFC securing a significant deal with the Saudi government. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter wrote that those in WWE had told us that Vince was involved in UFC's new deal with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia had been interested in MMA in the past and had made a huge offer to Habib Nurmagomedov to come out of retirement, but Nurmagomedov decided against it. But Vince's relationship there helped UFC close a similar big money deal. He also said, Triple H and Stephanie have always been great to work with. I've always had a great relationship with them, always, even when we weren't aligned back in the day, but the most amazing story is the relationship with Vince McMahon. He also said, Vince McMahon, man, he's an absolute savage. Even with the stuff that went down with us in the past, I respect it. I love killers. He's definitely a killer. He's the Michael Jordan of the business world. Recalling the time he hit Becky Lynch with his end of days finisher, Baron Corbin told Chris Van Vliet, that was Vince's idea. I was shocked when I got to the building, and it was in Philly, which I knew they were going to go nuts for. It was just like crazy, and like the death threats after all, worth it, totally worth it. Like my Instagram messages and Twitter and all of those things, people were like, dude, I'm gonna stab you the next time I see you for what you did to Becky. People buy into what we do, that's the art of what we do, can suspend disbelief. Can we make people think what we're doing is 100% real? And then people bought into that moment. They're like, a grown man put his hands on a woman. I want to fight that guy. It invoked this rage in people, and it was awesome. When it comes to an older story of WWE attempting to steal matchmaker Joe Silva from the UFC, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, it's funny because I don't think I've ever reported the fact that WWE came after Joe Silva. I don't know the answer as to what the motivation was. I don't think it was for creative, though. I think it was executive, administrative, or something. I know the whole story. I'm going to say early 2010s. It wasn't late 2010s. Oh, UFC had already established themselves, and Joe Silva had already won Booker of the Year awards when the happened. Yes, it was, and UFC was riding high. It appears that WWE wanted fans to believe that Brock Lesnar could have retired from the company at SummerSlam following his loss to Cody Rhodes, as Dave Meltzer pointed out on Wrestling Observer Radio. That was always the plan. You know, when he left and there were people going, was that his retirement? I was told WWE wanted it to seem like that, but he's coming back. Ringside News added, It was also noted that Crown Jewel was never in the cards for Brock Lesnar this year. He was slated to be out of action for the rest of the year. It was then noted that Brock Lesnar will likely be back for the Royal Rumble to kickstart the road to WrestleMania 40. Lesnar will not be around for the rest of this year, but fans have certainly not forgotten about him. He is already on promotional material for WrestleMania 40. When it comes to the reason for Ronda Rousey taking part in independent pro wrestling events, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, she just wanted to team with Marina Shafir, and she might be doing a revolver show. You hear about that? I think it might be in November, maybe the 16th, but there's a pro wrestling revolver show in Los Angeles. I think she wants to team with Marina, and maybe there's something there. She's a free agent. She can do what she wants. Now she's doing it for fun. It's in LA. She doesn't have to travel. She likes hanging out with Marina. Talking about the possibility of Ronda Rousey making her way to AEW, Dave Meltzer claimed on Wrestling Observer Radio. It's funny because, man, I don't know if she's cost-effective for AEW because, you know, what she made with WWE, everyone's cost-effective with WWE, but with AEW, it's like the bloom is off the rose. I mean, yeah, people talk about her and everything like that, but the bloom's kind of off the rose. The novelty effect of Ronda Rousey as a wrestler, it's been more and more years since she fought, and she's not the celebrity that she was was when she was a fighter. I wouldn't rule it out or anything, especially with all the people AEW does bring in. I wouldn't rule it out, but it wouldn't be a move that I would make now. I suppose if you get Mercedes Monet, then that could open a door for that possibility, but she didn't knock them dead on her last WWE run. Ronda Rousey had made an appearance for a recent event for Lucha Vavoom, teaming with Marina Shafir to face Brian Kendrick and Taya Valkyrie. Now, WWE has moved her to the alumni section, of their website as it remains to be seen if she returns to the company.
Speaking of Ronda Rousey, her next pro wrestling appearance was announced with Wrestling Revolver writing Breaking Revolver Unreal, November 16th, 2023, 8 p.m. Pacific. Home and I'm in Glendale, Air at Los Angeles, California. Live on Fight TV, the debut of Ronda Rousey. Tickets go on sale this Monday, October 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Part of proceeds donated to Maui Wildfire Relief. For the latest on a possible return to WWE for CM Punk, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, I was told it's a no, that doesn't mean forever it's wrestling, but I've heard nothing new. My gut is that if something happens, maybe they would want to keep it a secret, but I was told it's a pretty strong no, and you know that's the deal. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all later.